Not everything is always as it seems. At first glance, this may just look like another speaker, functional, familiar in shape, and completely ordinary. However, upon a closer look behind the face of the speaker lies its twin. Unseen, but just as important. This is Project Twin Wave, where sound is shaped by both the seen and unseen. An active driver center stage and its passive radiator ready backstage to make noise. This is the first for the channel, a 3D printed passive radiator to mirror the 3D printed driver. The units are placed exactly opposite of one another in what I'm calling the bread box, as it reminds me of a loaf of bread. Hidden behind five M3 screws is the new version 19 driver. Construction of the driver is very similar to version 18, as it retains the same frame, surround, and motor. The upper and lower sections still screw together and retain the spider. The cone, former, spider, and dust cap have been modified for this version. More on those later. The motor of the driver is still the same motor from version 18 and 17 that is based around two ceramic magnets. The passive radiator is an exact replica of the upper section of the driver and it only needed suspension and no driving components, so it uses the same cone, suspension, and frame as the driver. The box is printed in two pieces and uses a tongue and groove assembly method of alignment. The front beauty bezel signifies that it's the driver side of the speaker. I also designed the box with handles for easy mobility as I will use this in various locations for testing. So the cone was probably the biggest change for the whole speaker. Its weight is down to about 2.7 grams for the whole 4.5 inch cone, which is the lightest cone I've ever produced. This is thanks to using a vacuum former to mold PLA into the desired shape. The suspension also changed a bit, the surround is unchanged. However, the spider has been completely redone now, using five flat springs and a rotated spring direction for better linear travel. Taking a look inside the enclosure now, we can see the whole assembly, starting with the active driver. Again, the motor components are exactly the same as the previous version. The cone, though, has a new shape and improved gusset geometry to facilitate vacuum forming. It still screws together to retain the spider and the motor is still an overhung design to encourage longer throws. A dust cap has been added to seal the enclosure and boost pressure for the passive radiator. Moving on to the passive driver, we can see it's merely a shell of the active driver. It's missing the whole motor assembly and the coil windings. The suspension and cone are identical duplicates of the active driver though. The frame is a mirror image and it still uses a screw section to retain the spider. As this was the first attempt as a passive radiator, mistakes were made and we will see that in the response graphs. From here though, we will move on to a build montage and play test. First, a word about the channel sponsor, PCBWay. A huge thank goes out to them for their continued support of the channel throughout the year. It's been amazing to have them as sponsors. From high quality PCB manufacturing to CNC machining and 3D printing, PCBWay helps turn your ideas into reality. Whether you're a hobbyist or a pro, they've got the tools and expertise to bring your designs to life. Check them out using the link in the description. Now we'll move on to the build montage.
Okay, now moving on from the montage to DATS, I believe the new method of securing the coil with epoxy versus CA glue caused an increase in overall moving mass as the new speaker is about one gram heavier than version 18 when it was built with lighter components. It also has an FS of 70 hertz versus the 50 hertz of version 18. The efficiency of version 19 has increased though, producing 78 decibels at one watt one meter over the 77 that version 18 had. I wound this coil closer to 5 ohms instead of 6 ohms like the last driver in hopes of getting a bit more power from the amplifier to help drive the passive radiator. We can see this motor is still performing as expected with the nice resistance spike at the resonant peak. From DATS we're going to move on to REW now. Looking into the response curve, the first thing I noticed is my math was off somewhere. The dip at 80 Hz is, I believe, a byproduct of a passive radiator. However, when properly tuned, it should be much lower in the response graph, hopefully below the FS of the speaker and therefore outside the desired range. Other than that, though, this does deliver quite well in the mid-range with only a small drop between 400 and 900 Hz. The fall, is, fall off is somewhat at a desirable rate for perceived loudness at increasing frequency, though it does fall off quite quickly after 5000 Hz and I'm mildly disappointed by that as version 18 carried out much further and flatter. I did test at various angles off axis as well. The response was very similar among the different access. All tests were performed at 71 millimeters from center of the speaker. Um, you can see them on the screen now. I also tested the passive radiator side facing the mic and was intrigued by the results that it essentially mirrors the active side up to 100-ish hertz without that dip and then falls off at an increasing rate with various spikes, which I assume are at resonant points and factors of resonant points. I will again put the distortion graphs up for any interested viewers. Feel free to pause and inspect them after that. I will be moving on to closing statements. Okay, overall, I feel the passive radiator was an excellent exercise in understanding how waves can be destructive and constructive to sound. It was also a test in precise manufacturing. It's very easy to make one of something, but to make it in a way that you can produce two of them with identical assemblies and structure is more difficult. It gave me insight into ways to improve the repeatability of high tolerance items like the coil windings and magnet gap. So I'll be looking into them for some of the next upcoming versions. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.